Hi, and welcome to another Frivolous episode. If you're new here, welcome. I'm just a random person on the internet who loves beauty stuff and sometimes sits down to chat about her experiences with the stuff she buys. That's basically it. I hope I can provide you some information and if not, just some entertainment. So let's jump into it. You know what we're doing here today. You've seen it from the title. I had to add to the noise, but you know, I have a temperamental skin, let's call it that. So why not? Why not, right? So today we're going to go through the Lisa Eldridge Seamless uh, Skin Enhancing Tint. Here she is, just right from the oven and then we have two of her new lip liners i can't see what they're called called because i don't have my oh sculpt and shade lip pencils so these are the new formula and new shades that she's come out with and since we're at it i've had this for a bit but here we go it's the kitten lash mascara which i've had it for a month now maybe a bit less than a month and yeah, I'm, I've been preparing a ranking of my Lisa Eldridge beauty products because at this point, the only thing is I don't have is the eyeliner because I don't wear eyeliner because I have these folds. But every time I'm thinking of sitting down and I'm mentally preparing for the ranking, she comes out with new stuff. So hopefully that will be a video soonish in the future. So let's start with the application. I'll run through her claims. I have my trusty iPad here and I'll let you know what she says or what the brand says about the products, the promises, the claims, and then how it performs on my skin. For reference, I'm 44 years old. I don't have fillers or Botox or anything like that. So natural uh, sagging, wrinkles, stuff like that. And uh, um, my skin is pretty oily and I live in a pretty warm weather so we haven't properly had a winter that you would call a winter. Uh, we've had some low temperatures but for very lim a very limited time. It's not especially warm today but you know. So my skin usually gets back to a bit more of a normal state in the winter but this time around we Till now, we didn't have the chance to do that, so yeah. And also I have, as you can see, my pretty melasma, some hyperpigmentation. Once in a while, I get a few hormonal spots. Um, this area here is pretty, pretty beaten up and it's very textured and spotted because the, the breakouts come in and out of these areas here, which is really annoying. But that's what we're dealing with here. A bit of pores, some wrinkles, all the good stuff so you will see how this more lighter coverage product will perform on a more let's call it problematic skin less than flawless skin i think i can add to that a bit <laughs> so let's go through um what she says this is the seamless skin enhancing tint it's a fresh luminous and light coverage tint in a feel good formula made of 70% 78 yeah, 78% skincare ingredients for a replenished, healthy and plumped looking skin. Uh, this unique hybrid formula of the enhancing tint works to seamlessly even tone, lift shadows, tone down redness and boost luminosity. Think your skin, but on its best day. The ultra lightweight texture delivers a burst of hydration while simultaneously delivering blurring pigments to perfect and even the skin tone. Skin is soothed, smoothed and strengthened. The tone perfecting crease proof formula also means um, it works like a dream under the eyes. So these are the promises. My shade, if you're wondering, oh, this, this retails for 45 euros, 30 something um, pounds. And my shade is the direct um, match to the uh, foundation shade, which is, I, I am number 16 in the summertime. I don't have my winter shade in the winter time because I couldn't afford to buy two um, foundations from Lisa. Uh, but that would be 11. I've tried it and I think it's shade number 11. And this skin tint is T9. And I've used this before, before you doing this video. And I can tell you that, yes, it does work very well for me. You'll just, you'll see in a bit. So let's get this out of the way. I'm sorry for my hair, but it woke up in a mood and I can't, 
<laughs> uh, the light is going in and out because it's overcast today, so I'm sorry for that, but here we go. So, you meant to shake it up really well. And this is a thin um, product. As you can see, here's one drop. It's a thin product, but it's not too watery, I'd say. And Lisa sell, says to apply um, one drop and go from there. Listen, I've tried her technique. It works really well, but I know off the bat that I will need more coverage. Um, so what I do is I, I do about three droplets, a bit more maybe, three and a half, and then I blend it out in um, with my brush. I know you can use your fingers, and I also like to do that, but I prefer to use my fingers when I go and spot conceal or increase the coverage. That's when I like to do that. A bit more on this side. As you can see, the match is perfect to my neck. I'm, I'm a light, depending on the brand, of course, I'm sort of a light medium with olive undertones, more cool olive in the winter time, a bit more warm olive in the summertime, and that's about it. But always olive, and that's something I really rate about Lisa Eldridge's uh, products. They always have um, olives into account. Another droplet, so we're going on, what, five? Listen. This is how I do my things here. Uh, I've tried this in a couple of iterations. Today I'm applying this on just my bare skin with my, just my skincare. Very lightweight antioxidant serum that is very watery and then a very lightweight, the sun is coming through now, a very lightweight um, sunscreen. That's how I use stuff. So there we go. So now I'm going in and um, applying with my finger to the areas that I feel could use a bit more coverage. The, that first layer is done. The green tint also helps to uh, sort of, sort of, um, cancel out some of the redness on my face, which is nice. I have loads of little red spots, I'd say. So now I'm going into my melasma area. You've seen it before. It's pretty, oh, ouchie. It's doing pretty nicely right now, but you know. Let me scoot you over. So as you can see, in terms of pigmentation, I'm just gonna blend this out onto my neck as you can see in terms of coverage this doesn't deliver loads of coverage but it does tone down everything on your skin to a point where it does look um uh, really even without looking like you have anything on your skin i think that on camera you can see patches of green which is really weird because to the naked eye, that's not happening. I don't know what's up with that. It has to do probably with the light, but what can I do? But yeah, this is it. I've used about six drops of the skin tint and that's how it's looking. In terms of texture for this product and the first impression upon application, I think this delivers exactly what it says. My skin looks more even, uh, very healthy, but this is so lightweight, you can't see it on the skin, which is really impressive. And the finish is not dewy, which is something that, um, I think this product is bridging a gap that was I was seeing uh, with this kind of product, is that when you talk about uh, skin tints and tinted moisturizers and all that, usually the sheerer products, the sheerer cover, cover, coverage, the sheerer coverage products are more geared to dry skins, uh, as in they're very luminous and emollient off the bat. Uh, whereas this product, although it's not mattifying in any way, uh, it just lets what's underneath 
it to come through. So if you have uh, prepped your skin, if you have more um, hydrating products on your skin, they will be luminous and, see th and seen through the product. If you have a more uh, drier, mattified skin, it will be it will not be affected by the um, by, by the finish of this. So it is very true to what's underneath it instead of trying to change it, which I really appreciate because uh, because of that I can just change my skincare and get the finish that I uh, want with that kind of prepping step and not worry about having to manage a very, you know, dewy, emollient, shiny product that with my oily skin, although I do like some luminosity and I love a dewy skin finish, if it, the product is very luminous off the bat, it's bringing so much that I will have to mattify everything down underneath and I prefer not to. So I think this will suit most skin types. In my opinion, if you're very dry and you've tried this and you didn't get along with it, let us know in the comments below because it's very useful. And you can see when I apply a little bit underneath my eyes, it sort of slightly lifts that area and because it's so thin, it is not noticeable and I have quite crackly under eyes. Uh, they're not necessarily dry, they just, they have these little wrinkles. Can you see them? Do I look pretty like right now? <laughs> this doesn't emphasize that dryness like many concealers do, you know. Uh, and if you're going for a no makeup makeup look, uh, this would be just enough if you don't have very heavy under eye uh, problems or darkness. But with just a bit of a corrector, I think, underneath it, you maybe just get, a, get away with it. And it doesn't feel... It feels mostly set, it doesn't feel sticky or tacky on the skin, which I personally appreciate a lot. It doesn't feel like it's very slippery or creamy. It just feels like your skin has been recently hydrated, but it has just sunken in. And that's how it looks. I know that my skin is not the most beautiful skin on the internet, but I think because it has the melasma and the spots and all of that, you can see a truer uh, report of how it performs on some areas that you may want to um, cover and all of that. I can go in with a bit more uh, coverage here. Let's try that. I haven't done that in the past few days, but let's see how it goes. With a foundation, I'm looking at my monitor to see what is showing on the monitor because what I see in my mirror is completely different. But with Lisa Eldridge's foundation, you can only build it to a point and then it starts to get noticeable, which is perfectly fine. That's 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 fine. She works with, with very thin layers, so it makes sense for a product from her to perform like that. But um, I'm curious to see how much can you build this without, you know, ruining the very lightweight effect that will be dumb. But yeah, that's it. This is as much coverage as I think I would be comfortable taking from this product without feeling like I'm, <laughs> that I'm stepping my boundaries, you know? I'm just patted it on with a finger. It's really easy to apply. I wouldn't use a, um, a sponge with this just because it will absorb loads of product and this is very light and thin. Uh, but a brush, a denser brush that doesn't soak everything in all at once would be fine. That's what I've used with one of these kitten paw kind of brushes. And also your fingers. I just don't like to massage, you know, uh, foundation or a tinted product on my face with my hands. I prefer to go in the first layer, just the brush, and then go in with one finger and blend it in. So this is it. And I think it looks really pretty, sort of luminous but it doesn't look oily and if you're oily like me you know what I mean uh, people talk about the dew but they do most people don't consider how it feels uh, and even on this area here where I'm the oiliest and everything starts to push through very quickly it feels very set it hasn't enhanced my pores nor my wrinkles this was ill blended by the lip I'm sorry
So this is it for the tint. Let's go in with a bit of powder on one side and not powder on the other side. Now, keep in mind, I would powder this, especially on this area here because I touch my face. So I like to have a protective barrier. Uh, and on the sides of my nose, I like to powder everything because that's where I start to look shinier. Regardless of the product, that's where my oils break through. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to powder one side and not powder the other to see how it goes. I haven't tried it, so yeah. I'm not going to apply concealer. I'm just going to let it as is so that you can see how it performs under the eyes. So yeah, let's go in. If you're wondering, I'm using the Huda Beauty Powder. I'm going to powder this right side. So there you go. This is powdered. I know Lisa Eldridge says it doesn't need to be powdered and I sort of agree. I think if you're very oily, you will still want to add a little bit on the on this area here or where you sweat the most, or where you produce the most oils. But I don't think you necessarily, even being oily, need to immediately, you know, soak it in powder. As you've seen, I've done a very light wash and everything is set. This is the difference. This side is not set and this side is set. As you can see, nothing was disturbed. I'm going to move on with the rest of the uh, makeup on my face. I'm not going to do much, but just know I've been using this for several days now and I've it takes on any kind of cream or powder makeup really easily. So there's nothing to report there. So I'm going to skip onto the mascara application. So I'll see you in a bit. So I'm back, uh, I've done the rest of my face, just applied a little bit of blusher, a little bit of Emily Liquid Lyrics on my eyes, and that's it. And I'm gonna go with the Kitten Lash Mascara now, and I'm gonna try it on camera for you. Uh, let's see what they say. It's a lifting defining mascara for fluffy, fanned out lashes. Ooh, this has loads of description. Kitten Lash Mascara features a truly feather-like formula, delivering weightless, soft, and bouncy lashes. Smoothly coating and stretching each lash, the formula allows you to build your look from beautifully defined to naturally full and fluffy, depending on your desired result. Says it's long-wearing, smudge-proof, water-resistant. The micro bristles leave no lash behind, even the baby lashes, defining and separating each from root to tip. Designed to hug the lash line, the curved applicator effortlessly fits the contour of all eye shapes, allowing access right at the root of the lash to instantly densify the look of lashes. So as you can see on the description, it says nothing about being either a tubing mascara or a waterproof mascara. It does say it's long wearing, um, but that's all there is to it. Although, in her video while applying the mascara, Lisa mentioned you could remove it with warm water, which is something that happens with tubing mascara, but you could also remove it with micellar water, which happens with regular mascara. So I was so confused because, you know, for me, the all-time perfect mascara is a tubing mascara because those can... Um, resist oils, which I have on my eyelids, and it, they also resist, you know, watery eyes. They won't resist a huge cry because they come out with warm water, but the, those nasty little tears that some people get very frequently on the um, outer edges of the eyes, it deals perfectly with that. So for everyday use, Tubing mascaras is where it's at for me. Waterproof mascaras can be diluted with oil, so if you have oily lids, you will notice, at least I do, they smudge regardless. They can handle loads of crying, but that's about it. So for me, tubing is where it's at. So I was really confused about this mascara. I, I have to say this, I was really confused. So I also noticed that, and I'm going to do a comparison today, the wand is very similar, very, very similar to my favorite Tau 28 Make Waves Mascara. Can you see that? They're both plastic bristle wands. And the main difference is that the Tau 28 one has, uh, the bristles are a bit more separate between them. And this is a fluffier, the Lisa Eldridge is a fluffier wand. So I decided to, May, for the camera today, I'm going to do a little comparison. Keep in mind, 
I've had the Lisa Eldridge mascara for a month, which means it starts a bit thinner and then it sort of dries down to a steadier kind of formula and until it starts to really dry down. And I think it, this is at that steady phase of the mascara. Whereas my Tower 28, it's at its wit's end. I love it. I love most mascaras when they're really dry. So there's that. I'm keeping everything very honest here. But yeah, I'm going to remove a part of the product because I think this comes really saturated and I'm going to apply it to my lashes as I usually do. I usually go uh, wiggle them into the roots and then work it in there for a bit and then comb out. So first application is done. As you can see, I always stamp mascara on my lids. Regardless of the applicator, I always end up messing up my mascara on my lids. That's not a problem for me. I used to it. I just wait for it to dry down and then I just remove it with a dry spoolie, just scrape it off. But as you can see, I have very um, nicely defined um lashes, it has some volume, it's very inky and black which I appreciate and it doesn't look clumpy at all. Now on the other eye I'm going to do with the Tau 28 mascara the same thing. Because this is drier I had to dunk it in for a bit more product halfway through, but this is basically one coat of the Tau 28 mascara. And as you can see, it gives me more separation of the lashes as in they're all um, individually coated in a way and they look fluffier in my opinion. I know this has to do a bit with um, the fact that this mascara is drier, but I can get this result even when the mascara is um, more uh, wet at the beginning of its life, you know? I'm gonna go with another layer on this eye. I haven't curled my lashes, by the way. And this is what I get when I start to build up the mascara this is what I usually get and this is where I stop because I'm starting to notice I hope you can see those little dots at the end of the lashes and I can't do with that it's kind of spidery little dots that's where I stop you get loads of volume definition the lashes look really beautiful I'm gonna go with Tau 28 again. <sighs> it's on its last breath. And now I'm really building it up. So this is it, these are the two mascaras, kind of build up to the same level, I'd say. And of course I've stamped mascara with both, both of them on my lids. <laughs> um, but yeah, as soon as I do my lips, I'll scrape it off. But you can see how they look in terms of length, curl, and uh, overall appearance. I can say that this Lisa Eldridge one is blacker uh, off the first swipe and inkier, but it does have a tendency, at least on my lashes, this is very personal, it has a tendency to sort of uh, clump them up a bit more at the roots and then add a bit of that spidery leg at the, at the end of them. Whereas this one doesn't do that. It gives me, oh, there's a bit of a clump there, sorry. Um, it kind of builds the volume on the lashes and then leaves them very defined but separated and individually coated. But the end result is very similar. Now, what I have to say about this product at the end of the day is I found that Tau 28 mascara 
sometimes, and I don't know why or when or where, but sometimes, not very often, smudges on me on the outer corner of my eyes. Don't ask me why. Maybe it's because it transfers to my lower lashes, but it's such a thin amount that I don't notice it. Uh, but it does uh, slightly smudge sometimes. I have very oily lips. This does not budge. The Lisa Aldridge Mascara just stays on the lashes wherever you've applied them, and it stays looking the same the whole day, at least for me. I don't, I don't have problems with curling my lashes. I don't curl my lashes, but I don't have any problem with them falling down either. This, I don't feel, it ke keeps them crispy and set up. But because it's very lightweight to the touch, it doesn't weigh them down either. If you have very stick straight lashes, um, by curling them, I don't know if this will hold the curl because on one hand, again, it's not crispy. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's very stiff. But on the other hand, it's so lightweight. I don't know how it would work for you, but that's my kind of my... Um, conclusion with that. For me, that is not a problem. I don't feel that my lashes droop down throughout the day with either of these mascaras. Um, the, th the major difference in terms of longevity is really that the Lisa Eldridge does not budge. It hasn't um, f flaked down either. It hasn't um, smudged in any way. It just stays where it is, which I absolutely appreciate. I found it interesting. The first time I tried to remove it, I went on with my cleansing balm, which I wear, I use for everything. And this was a bit difficult to remove with the cleansing balm. And I was kind of like, oh, she mentioned warm water or um, um, a micellar water. Okay, I'll go in with a micellar water. And it came out effortlessly with a micellar water. I don't know what was about that, but I don't like having to go with a separate eye makeup remover. I like to go in with my cleansing balm and uh, remove everything at once. So I, what I did the next day was to remove it just with water and it just comes out with water very easily. I don't understand. The science is really baffling, but that was my experience. So you can actually remove it with micellar water and, warm, and or warm water, but with my cleansing balms, which destroy everything, this was sticking down. I don't know. So now I'm going to, since this has been drying for a bit, I'm just going to scrape it off. It's the easiest way to remove your mascara from your eyelids. Just make sure it's all set before you scrape it off so that it doesn't clump the lashes together. So yeah, this is my conclusion on the mascara. I'm very torn because I sort of prefer the, fe the feathery, fluttery finish of the Tower 28, but the longevity and stability of this one and the blackness of it is beautiful. So these are two gorgeous mascaras at different price points, I may add, and I like them both, which can happen. You can like more than one thing. Now onto the lips. I have two uh, lip definers. This is how they're called. Uh, Sculpt and Shade Lip Pencil. I have one in 2C and one in 1N. So the neutral, the lightest neutral, and the second uh, lightest cool tone. So I'm going to show you the two of them here. This formula differs from the original one. The original one is thicker. It feels more like almost a liquid lipstick in itself. I think she could do chunky crayons for the lips with that formula and it would be amazing because those set and they do not budge. They give you time to blend out but I think this is, was a good addition because uh, these are more everyday lightweight lip pencils that you can apply um, and forget about them a bit and if they fade off because of the colors you won't notice them that much. Those are a, a, a sidekick for her lipsticks or just wear them on their own. They will not budge. Actually, they last longer than the lipsticks on the lips. So they're amazing in that sense, but they're a bit thicker and they're a bit more high maintenance, I'd say, upon application. After applying, you don't have to mesh with that. So we have the 1N here and this one is the 2C. So the two colors, one is beigey, the other one is pinky. So let us compare with some of my favorite lip liners of all time, because I don't think anybody can do uh, lip liner colors as well as NYX. Sorry, 
those lip liners are not as good and long wearing, although they have changed the formula. They're a bit better now, a lot better now, I should say. But the color, the colors from NYX are amazing. This is one of my all time favorites. This is Los Angeles. As you can see, as it's darker, but it would be maybe you could find it in the Lisa. This is Los Angeles. And this is the Lisa neutral one. Maybe the darker color from Lisa is closer to this. I don't know. But it has a bit of purpliness to it. It's not orange. This is the old discontinued nude beige, which is an absolute favorite of mine. And I'm so sad that it's gone nude beige. But you can see it's pretty close to the 1N from Lisa Eldridge. Maybe uh, it has a bit more grey to it, which I actually really loved about this colour. And this is the new Nude Beige, which they came out with recently. And as you can see, it's a lot pinkier. It's this one here. But it's still not as a deep pink or a saturated pink as this one from Lisa Eldridge. So the NYX shades tend to be more desaturated and the Lisa Eldridge are a bit more saturated. I'd say Nude Beige is almost a perfect mix between the 1M and the 2C from Lisa Eldridge, uh, but I'd love to see that color, uh, to be honest, in a lip liner. I also have here, for comparison, I'll put it here. This is Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. You can see it's brighter. It's a brighter pink than uh, to see. So that go. These lipsticks or lip liners apply beautifully. They look gorgeous on the lips. I have nothing to say. The color matches my lip line really well. I'm going to go with the cooler one on this side. There's nothing on my lips now. So this is one end, and you can see it's almost, almost perfectly my lip color. A bit beigier maybe, and this one is 2C. Off the bat, a brighter, pinkier color. but still quite neutral on my uh, skin tone. What I'm gonna do now, just for the shits and giggles, I'm gonna align the outer line with the pink and blend in a bit of the beige on the center of the lips. So this is it. As you can see, it's a beautiful lip line, uh, liner. These are beautiful lip liners. The colors are really nice. I think these were an amazing addition. I think she was missing the neutrals. I think she can go even cooler toned uh, with the cool tones, but um, it's still, these still look amazing on the lips. From my experience, these do transfer a bit, as you can see. I built them up though. These do transfer a bit. They don't set as well as the other ones. Uh, but they do impart a beautiful color. These are not as smoothing on the lines because they're thinner, I'd say, but they melt into the texture of your lips and they don't look visibly made up with these lipsticks. So they are perfect for your nude lips, for your balmy lipsticks, but just keep in mind, you will have to reapply these because they are, these are not extremely long wearing. I think the uh, Charlotte Tilbury is more long wearing. It's closer to the original formula of uh, Lee Seldridge's lip pencils. So this is more long wearing and they have, you know, new more neutrally colors. Uh, whereas Lee Seldridge, I think is lacking a bit of this beautiful nude, um, desaturated color story in their other lip liners. On top of this, I'm just going to apply Slip, which is a very neutral, lipstick from Merit and it does have a bit of a sheen but it's not very noticeable. It's a very simple, simple lipstick. The lip pencils retail for 24 euros, yes euros, and they have four neutral shades and three cool and three warm 
undertones. Um, and then the mascara retails for 35 euros. So it's about 10 euros more expensive than the Tau 28. So yeah, I'm going to go about my day and I'll do just a check-in at the end of the day. Uh, it's about 1 p.m. already. I have to go and have lunch and I'm going to come back and let you know how the skin tint performed throughout the rest of the day. And yeah, just keep in mind this side is not set and the side is set. So I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Hey, I'm back. It's about 7 o'clock, uh, 7.30, yeah, 7.30 in the afternoon, and this is how I look. Basically, I have been resisting the urge, which wouldn't be realistic on a normal day, to blot. I just didn't do it so that you could see, without any retouching, how this looks. And this is how the um, skin tint looks. I still have blusher on, things are still here, my skin still, look, still looks pretty similar to what it used to what it did uh i just look a bit oily on my usual usual areas so giving it a fair shot there it is some oil coming off and a bit of product so this is one of those that if you do blot uh the product will come off and because it has so little coverage you will have some redness exposed. It's not one of those that sticks to your face and then only the oil comes off. You know what I mean? Other than that, I was oily basically, sort of close to the same on both sides, but it did start to show up a bit sooner on the area where I hadn't powdered. And that's basically the difference. On my lashes, everything is still the same. I think you can see there's a tiny smudge here. Um on the uh, Tower 28 uh, side, on this area, nothing moved. It's still, it's still pretty nice, right? My lips re were removed completely. I have just reapplied uh, Tinder Lip Balm just to keep on carrying on. I wasn't counting on anything like that. Hi, <laughs> it's me from the future. I just sat down to edit, just no, it's been a couple of days, sat down to edit uh, the footage and I realized um, it was a full day that day and when I got to the moment of doing my final thoughts on the skin tint I can form a full sentence and it would take me longer to piece out each bit where I could make some sense on that footage it would take me longer than just sitting down and doing my final thoughts again so here I am today I'm wearing the skin tint again but today I'm wearing concealer and I'm having I've applied a bit more powder so you can see how it looks on a more average day for me in terms of coverage while we're at it. Now, final thoughts. I don't think I conveyed how impressed I was with this product, how much I liked it, and above all, how surprised I was with how much I liked it. Because on paper, I'm not the target audience, and I wasn't expecting that this would be so impressive for me. Um, so that's saying a lot, I guess, for my experience. This does, this is a skin tint. This not, this is not pretending to be a skin tint by being a, a low coverage foundation. This is truly a skin tint. This has barely any coverage, but the coverage that it has in the weirdest way, I don't know if it's the colors, the way the pigment lays, I don't, I can't explain it to you, but it is actually perfecting to the skin uh, and, e and evens the skin out really beautifully without being noticeable. You can't see it on my face. And that really blew my mind. And in that aspect, I think it does what it says on the tin. And may I dare say that this is not only a great addition to Lisa Eldridge's collection of products that she has to sell. This is a very innovative product on the market. I have never seen something like this. And the finish is natural, as in neutral, as in it's not shiny, uh, it's not very luminous, it's not sticky, it, it sets into the skin and you don't feel it anymore on your skin. And it's not drying or mattifying either. So I see this being suitable for many skin types 
and from somebody who has melasma and blemishes, and you've seen my skin in 4K, I put it all out there, no filters, uh, bad lighting, <laughs> you've seen it, and it really improves the look of my skin. And if I maintain it a bit better than I did on the day that I recorded, as I, I left it just drain down my face with oils, it looks really good for many hours. So all in all, I'm super impressed. I wasn't expecting to be this impressed. And the fact that it's a tiny, squishy, little white pebble uh, that is easy to carry with you, bonus points. I think this... This is far better than this clunky bastard over here. <laughs> Just my opinion. It's really pretty, but mm, you know, mm. anyway, other than that, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope I kept you company. If you have, leave me a thumbs up, comment down below what you want to see next from me. Are you going to buy this? Have you bought this? Has this worked for you? Because this is just my opinion. And, uh, other than that, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for spending your time on me and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.